Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome again to What's Haunting the Hearsts. Uh, <clears throat> technically, the beginning of this video is Thursday, uh, but I want to include this on the Friday uh, vlog. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to do it while it was still fresh on my mind. I watched a movie uh, last night that um, really uh, creeped me out. I'm going to be honest. I uh, When I got through watching the movie, <clears throat> I had to get up and... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. I had to get up and make sure the doors were locked, you know, double check. I, I'm telling you, the movie had that type of an effect on me. And I watch a lot of horror movies. And sorry, my hand got on the camera. Uh, <clears throat> I watch a lot of horror movies. And, you know, a few of them will creep you out and what have you or or give you like a gross out effect or something like that but this movie really got to some primal fear in me and this movie's called willow creek and it reminded me a little bit at least format wise of like the blair witch project um it's kind of like a found footage type deal but this movie my goodness I was not uh, expecting how good it was it was really well done uh, for the genre <clears throat> basically uh, this couple uh, goes to uh, Northern California um, <clears throat> where the Patterson Gimlin uh, film was shot which if you're a Bigfoot connoisseur like I am Patterson Gimlin uh, began it for you if you know what I mean it, it's the Patterson Gimlin film of Bigfoot walking across uh, that rock bed where the creek was and they've you know people even skeptics non-believers of bigfoot have done analysis on this video and said you know we cannot prove that this is a suit like a like a costume uh it has muscle tone in it it has it's obviously a female bigfoot um and you can tell it's a female Bigfoot. Um, so it was anatomically correct. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's a, it's an awesome video to watch. But back to the movie. So the the boyfriend in this relationship is a is a Bigfoot buff. You know, he wants he wants to go back. He wants to he wants to catch footage of the area and if he's lucky uh be able to see bigfoot the girlfriend doesn't believe in bigfoot at all doesn't believe in anything paranormal um so she's skeptical through the whole thing she she'll kind of annoy the pants off you during the whole thing uh a lot of things happen uh in the build-up uh, to him going to the Bluff Creek area <clears throat> with his girlfriend. So they park their car, and they have like an hours-long hike to get to the area. So they end up camping overnight. And it's one of those movies where... I'll, I'll give you a spoiler alert. You never see Bigfoot. But you are saturated with Bigfoot. And you are filled with fear and trepidation of Bigfoot in this movie. 
So they set up their tent and they try to sleep. Emphasis on try. Well, then they start hearing noises. They start hearing uh, wood knocking, which is uh, a known thing that Bigfoots will do is they'll take a stick and bang it up against a tree or take two pieces of wood and bang them together to make a, a distinctive wood knock. And another thing in Bigfoot lore is their vocalizations. Now there's a few eerie vocalizations that you'll hear um, if you do any study uh, on Bigfoot and just try to listen to audio uh, Bigfoot vo vocalizations. Some of them are very eerie, wailing, uh, some screams and roars. Um, but this one starts out pretty, uh, pretty benign, just whoop whoop, something like that. And that's a that's a well known thing that Bigfoot will do. Well, you know, when he hears that, you know, the boyfriend's getting all excited. It's like we're going to we're going to catch this thing on film. Well, it's still not. They're still in the tent and the vocalizations get more and more um, pronounced and there's a wailing. And uh, the girlfriend's getting really scared. So she said, you know, maybe our the light from the camera is attracting them to us and making them do all of this activity. Let's turn the light out. Well, when they turn the lights out, this creature walks up to the tent and starts banging up against the tent. So they turn the light back on, you can hear the creature walk off. Uh, it's about a 25 minute ordeal in this tent. And that 25 minutes just had me glued to the TV. And I was just, my heart rate blows up and I, I was terrified. Um, and they connect it with missing persons. I won't give you the end of the movie. I'll let you enjoy some of it on your own. But they connect it to missing persons. And that's an interesting thing because that's, a, that's, that's speculation on a lot of Bigfoot hunters' uh, parts that a lot of these missing person cases that happen in our national parks and out in the wilderness... Authorities aren't very forthright about about things that they found, things that they might suppress about the search, and uh, they don't really want to answer questions. Um, I've read a few accounts, and a lot of the accounts, right up front in the first paragraph, when people ask questions, the authorities just, right off the bat, just say, oh, there's no such thing as Bigfoot but they'll say wild animals maybe are responsible for the disappearance. Well, if Bigfoot exists, would he not be a wild animal? You know, bears, bears will eat you, but usually there's some evidence that a bears ate you and attacked you. If Bigfoot's grabbing these people and manhandling them away, there may not be evidence other than tracks. And maybe that's part of the evidence that's being uh, suppressed. Uh, so watch the movie Willow Creek. I'll put another image of Willow Creek here uh, so you can find it. Um, I think it's free with ads on uh, Amazon Prime, uh, but it's worth a watch. Another movie that's pretty good is called Exists. And I'll put an image of it up too. Uh, I watched it as well. It didn't scare me. Like Willow Creek scared me. But. Uh, it gave me. It gave me some chills. Uh, just imagining. How I would feel in those situations. Terrifying. Uh. But yeah, so definitely check these movies out. 
but we'll continue with this uh, Friday vlog uh, and the subject that we have on hand. So, I thought I'd share some of my own personal experiences with paranormal uh, activity. And uh, there's not been many, honestly, uh, for someone that's literally so interested in the paranormal you would think I would have all kinds of experience um, with that type of thing, but I really haven't. But um, when I was younger, um, probably, I would say nine or 10, I experienced something it, it's clear in my mind today um i think my mom was cooking dinner in the kitchen and uh we had a long hallway that all the bedroom doors were at and there was a door that went down steps the kitchen was in a, uh, was its own room. It even had a door that shut. It was kind of a weird, especially when today open concept is such a big thing. But, um, so the kitchen was at one side of the hall, one end. The other end of the hall, uh, was my mom's bedroom. And I remember I came in through the living room, which was right next to the kitchen. I came into the hallway and I clearly saw a woman in white. And what, what was strange about it was the woman had like very uh, kind of whitish hair even. And it was clearly, it looked like a physical being. It didn't look like a spirit or anything like that. A physical being just walked this broad daylight. Of course, it was inside, but it was at, in daytime. But this thing walked into my mom's bedroom, clear as day. And I remember I was needing my mom for something. And I was, I guess I was originally heading to the kitchen where she actually was cooking dinner. But I went towards her bedroom you know, looking for her. And I was like, Hey mom. And she called to me, but she called to me from the kitchen. Well, I went on ahead towards her room and looked around. Nothing was there. Nobody was there. Nobody else was even home. Uh, so to see someone clearly walk into that room, there's no exits from that room except for that door, uh, that I watched whatever it was, walk into that door. Uh, it wasn't a trick of my eyes. It wasn't something out of my peripheral vision. I literally turned, looked down the hall, and saw something go in that room. Something that never came out. Something that wasn't visible when I walked into the room. Uh, years later, I think I was maybe... A year or two later, uh, we were out to eat at a restaurant, and I, I feel like maybe Applebee's or something. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, some of those memories fade a little bit. But I remember looking out. It was, it was in the evening. It was night when we were eating. And I remember looking out the window, and I could just see a woman... Once again, a white, not only 
skin, I'm not talking about skin color. When I say white, I'm talking about all white standing outside the window. And um, I remember I got real close to the window to look out of it. And there was nobody there. There wasn't even cars. It wasn't even part of the parking lot, really. It was just the window was looking out like into the grass, like next to the building. It wasn't a reflection on the other, on my side of the window. So I kept seeing um, throughout uh, my childhood, I would, I, I saw, physically saw a woman in white twice. Um, and the one that scared me, I didn't see, but I heard, uh, me and my friend were, my friend was spending the night at my house because we were going to go fishing, uh, early in the morning, like four thirty-five in the morning. And, uh, so he was going to spend the night at my house. We were going to stay up most of, I don't know why our plan was stay up most of the night and then I think I think we were going to stay up all night and just be ready to go fishing at 4.30, which you can do when you're a kid, you know, when you're a teenager. So we planned on doing that. Well, it got 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. We were tired. We had been spraying water in our eyes, trying to keep ourselves awake. We were tired. So we went to my room. He laid down on the floor. I laid on my bed, and we were laying there. Uh, for probably 20 minutes and I thought he was asleep and I think he thought the same thing about me and um, I heard something at first I thought it was my first thought was like it was a dirt bike in the distance it was very high pitched sound and I remember listening and I'm like who's riding a dirt bike at 2 30 in the morning just randomly but then I, I listened close and I heard it again and then I heard it again and what it was was a voice and it was almost like and this is kind of humorous because it's almost like um, Ariel in The Little Mermaid the voice was like uh, but it was kind of a creepy melodic voice and it chilled my blood like I couldn't move it it sounded like it was right next to me in bed and I thought I was crazy had to be the only one hearing it but, and like I said, I thought my friend was asleep. So I whispered his name and I called out his name like that. And he just said, what? And he was kind of crying when he answered. And I was like, did you hear that? He was, yes. And I was like, did it sound like a woman, a woman's voice? He was like, yeah. I was like, well, the room was pitch black. And I was like, well, you're next to the wall where the light switch is i was like just jump up and flip the light switch on and he said he would but he jumped up and got in bed with me and said turn the light on so i had to get up and run over to the light switch and turn it on uh we didn't see anything we never heard it again but we talked about it he said it sounded like it was under the bed and and to me it sounded like it was right next to me just a disembodied voice and I kind of connected it to the kind of ghostly figures I had seen at different times in my life and I think I'll have to ask her about it my oldest sister I think she had talked about a white witch vision I, I may be I may be completely off on that uh, I'll have to ask her about it but there is tradition about a white, 
It's called a woman in white, the white woman or a white witch. And it's usually just a woman dressed in white, kind of a pale pallor about her. And um, from what I understand, it signifies tragedy, loss, um, sadness, loneliness, death. Uh, you can look it up for yourself. Um, but that's kind of the extent of my spirit type deal. Unexplained, uh, abnormal happenings as a child. Um, as an adult, and I'm talking about within the last five years, uh, I've had two instances that I can think of right this second that have happened in the immediate area of where I live now. So one happened down the road, not even half a, not even half a mile, maybe half a mile exactly from here. Um, Actually, I think that was the second instance. I'll tell that one in a minute. The first instance, I was going down Norris Freeway, which is right, the road right next to my road. My, my road kind of intersects with Norris Freeway, which is a pretty major highway in the area. And I was driving one night, it was late at night, and I was driving at a pretty good clip. Uh, I was going faster than I needed to be going. And there's no cars on the road besides mine, which is rare in Norris Freeway because you're there's all kinds of cars on Norris Freeway at all times of the day and night. But I was just flying down it, and I remember I saw something so clearly run out of the woods from my from the driver's side. And I remember even then when I told people, I said it was a deer. But as I, as I remember it, in hindsight, it couldn't have been a deer. It, it, it couldn't. It was way too high off the ground. I mean, this deer would have had to have been standing on its hind legs. But it, it, it came running out of the woods like it was going to cross. And I remember I thought, I'm going to hit whatever this is. And I had to correct and... Uh, almost hit it and I remember it got to the window and I could see its teeth. It wasn't like bare in its teeth. It was like almost like grit in its teeth. Like it's almost like like you're about to get hit. And I remember seeing that so clearly and I did tell people it was a deer. But I don't think it could have been. I don't think it could have been. Well the next day I was coming home from work and it was already dark and I was driving down my road about a half a mile from here as I said and I was going a little bit faster than what I usually go uh, I was wanting to get home but there was a creature on the side of the road and when I first saw it, I thought it was like a large dog, like a Rottweiler. But it was too, it was too stout to be a Rottweiler. And if it was a dog, I'm telling you, if it was a dog, if the dog stood, it, whatever it was, was sitting. Or at least crouched. If it was a dog... When it stood up on its hind fours, it or on its hind fours, when it stood up on it, all four legs, it would have had to have been six foot tall uh, to make it work as a dog. It, it, there's no way it could have been a dog. Uh, I didn't get a clear visual of its face, its it, even its general outline. Like I said, this thing was crouched down. Uh, so, I don't know if it was the same creature that maybe I almost hit the other, the day before on Norris Freeway. Um, as I think about it years later, I'm like, well, maybe, 
Maybe it was. Maybe I made it mad. Maybe it was keeping an eye on me. What I do know is there's a lot of forest around me. Even right now, I'm looking out a window in, towards my backyard. And at the back of the, at the very back of my backyard is just a ridge line, which is forest trees, as far as you can see. And uh, I, I went back there once. I thought it might be good to shoot a vid video back there one day. I might do it still. But it's it's really dense, especially when you first get into it. But when once you're into it, it opens up a bit. But there's a lot of fallen trees. Uh, there's a lot. Well, the one time I went back there pretty good, um, there was a spider, like a hairy wolf spider on a on a fallen tree and when i looked at it it jumped literally two foot to the next fallen tree and i'm like well i'm not a big fan of spiders anyway well i saw that and then i heard something to the right of me fall out of a tree i mean you could hear it just thud and it wasn't like a stick or a branch you could hear it's like a thud something alive fell out of that tree well when it hit the ground it started going a rattling sound well as soon as i heard that i mean we've got timber rattlers galore in tennessee as soon as i heard that rattling sound i turned around and skedaddled now come fall winter when it cools down i might in some of those dense leaves uh kind of calm down back there i might shoot a video back there and do a little exploring um right now it's tick season snake season yellow jack season yellow jacket season but uh so yeah that's some of my stories uh so the woman in white i often think about it the tragedy part of it and it's kind of a i'm not a superstitious guy i'm really not so that's not something that bothers me. Uh, I have faith in God. I don't have faith in what people say about a woman in white or a white witch. I'm just telling you what I experienced. And as far as the creature, you tell me, was it Bigfoot? Was it Dogman? Was it the Wampus Cat? I'm just telling you, it's whatever it was, it wasn't something you would normally see because I feel like if it was something not out of the ordinary I would have picked up on what it was I wouldn't have been unsure um so yeah those are some of my stories and uh I'm sure some more will come to my mind uh but that's what I can think of just right off the bat um, but thank you for watching this podcast and, uh, will or vlog. I keep calling it a podcast, but it's, it's a vlog. Um, but enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, the greatest day of the week. And, um, thank you for getting us to a hundred subscribers, 15,000 views over 15,000. Can you imagine uh, thank you once again, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Uh, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Have fun. Be safe. And keep tuning in to what's haunting the hearse. Thank you.